Hello our dear viewers and welcome to our show Diet Myths. Today we're going to be talking to you about a very interesting topic and that is hypothyroidism. So for many of you that are not sure what hypothyroidism is, it's when your thyroid stops functioning properly. And usually the symptoms of hypothyroidism don't come along right away, so you don't feel it right away unless you're getting a blood test and you see that your thyroid is not functioning. But otherwise, once it's in your body for a long time and you've had this symptoms or this disease for a long time, what happens is, is you start putting on weight, you start feeling tired, and no matter how much sleep you get, you're just not as energized. And of course, those symptoms are very similar to many other you know, deficiencies. So you're not gonna be able to pinpoint it to hypothyroidism right, right away, but definitely a blood test will be able to tell whether or not you have it. Is your thyroid killing you and you don't even know it? Do you even know what the thyroid is? And how important it is to the body? The thyroid is the butterfly-shaped gland that sits just below the Adam's apple. It is important because it plays a role in the body's growth and metabolism. The thyroid produces the hormones needed when the body needs more energy. Like energy to warm yourself up, to lose weight or even to help keep up endurance during pregnancy. The thyroid helps to regulate many body functions by releasing hormones into the bloodstream. If the thyroid produces too much hormone it is known as hyperthyroidism. On the flip side, if the thyroid does not produce enough hormone, you get hypothyroidism. Having the condition of hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism is not healthy for the body. Having an overactive or an underactive thyroid brings an assortment of body symptoms with it. Symptoms such as brain fog, fatigue, depression, hair loss, or sweats are the most common. But the dreaded weight control is the one issue that gets the most attention. Doctors will give you drugs to help balance the thyroid. However, this solution does not really address the real root of the problem. If you want to help improve the thyroid function and get it back to a more normal condition, then it is time to take a look at what you are putting into your body. It is time to change your diet. And the interesting thing is that food plays a major role in either decreasing or helping your thyroid function better or increasing the hypothyroidism and therefore hindering the function of your thyroid and making your situation worse. So hopefully today we'll be able to cover the good foods that we'd like you to have more of and then some foods that you should be cautious about, especially if you're not consuming a good amount of iodine. And then of course we will be discussing the sources of iodine in your diet. Now just so you know, iodine deficiency is very rare and that is because our salt comes fortified with iodine. So anybody that puts salt in their food is getting a decent amount of iodine and doesn't have to worry about that deficiency. But if you do have hypothyroidism or know anyone that does, stay tuned because we have some interesting facts coming up. Welcome back our dear viewers. So let's look closer at hypothyroidism and iodine especially. Now all these foods that I will be talking about are closely related to iodine. So all the foods that we're going to be talking about will either increase your body's absorption of iodine or decrease it. And based on how much iodine you have in your body, your thyroid will either function properly or will have an imbalance and either not function at all. So the first food group that I want to talk about are the leafy greens. And the leafy greens contain a great deal of magnesium. And magnesium really helps your body take up all the iodine it has. 
So sometimes you could be consuming a great deal of iodine, especially if you're taking in salt, and most of our food is fortified with iodine. But if you're not taking in a decent amount of leafy greens, your absorption might not be very well, and therefore you could be deficient. Another thing that will help with the absorption of iodine are nuts. And that is because nuts contain selenium, and especially Brazil nuts. So with research, we found that having three to four Brazil nuts a day can actually give you the selenium needs you need for an entire day. So you don't really need to eat that much to get what your body needs. And again, what selenium and magnesium both do is that they enhance the absorption of iodine in your body. Therefore, you're absorbing more. And of course, when you're thinking of something like iodine, which is very salty, you're always thinking of seafood. So things like kelp and seaweed, as well as fish, are very rich sources of iodine that you can have to avoid having that deficiency. And once you have enough iodine, then you really don't have to worry about foods hindering your hypothyroidism. Stay tuned, because we're gonna talk about foods that you should be avoiding if you are deficient in iodine. Welcome back, my dear viewers. So let's take a look at foods that could actually hinder the absorption of iodine in your body. And now the first one I'm sure you've heard of as the greatest superfood, and it was the superfood of 2015. But if you are iodine deficient or are not getting enough iodine, then definitely stay away from kale. Now I'm sure all of you are thinking kale is that great superfood, but once kale is eaten raw and not cooked, it could actually decrease the absorption of iodine and therefore worsening your case of hypothyroidism. So it's very important for people that are using kale in green juices or using kale in salads and cabbage of course and broccoli fall into that you know family group of kale so it's very important for you to have them cooked if you're not sure whether or not you have an iodine deficiency and definitely do not consume them raw every day because they could make that situation worse now another group of foods that could worsen the absorption of iodine are soy products so you're looking at soybeans soy milk edamame would fall into that group and basically they hinder the absorption of iodine so they, they block your body's absorption of iodine and therefore you become deficient and then you develop hypothyroidism so with these two you just need to make sure you're getting enough salt and table salt works best now rock salt or natural salt has not been fortified with iodine therefore it doesn't work all the time but like i said Previously, iodine is, deficiency is really very rare to come by and almost all of us get a great deal and great amount from it. If you do suffer from hypothyroidism, make sure you take your pills and don't just rely on foods to help you um, battle and combat this situation. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode and we'll see you all next time. <music>